Good morning, everyone. Actually, good afternoon. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. And right now, as you can see, I am peeling potatoes. I was at the garden this morning. <laughs> and, of course, it uh, had still rained a little bit uh, the other day, and the, the ground is still wet and heavy. But I did what I could. You know, you work a little bit at a time. And, you know, May 2-4 is the traditional planting weekend around here and sometimes I've managed to get things in a little bit before then but it doesn't appear as though we'll be managing that this year. That's uh, what 14-15 days away? It's not far now and I'm still not uh, I still don't have the ground cleared. Maybe half of it. Now I did manage to um, move that garlic. I think that there were 10 or 15 cloves of garlic that I planted that had grown beautifully and uh, but they were in a bad spot. I had just stuck them in the ground last fall just to get them in the ground and um, de decided to move them and I dug a very large amount of soil with them so hopefully, hopefully um, they will take where I replanted them. They didn't seem to be too disturbed, but we'll see if... You know, I still have a larger plot of garlic, so if that doesn't uh, survive, I guess I'm, you know, I'm not out garlic altogether. But I've got my garden half clean, and it's a very long and involved process because I'm trying to... Um, Let's see, I cleared the grass away from the asparagus spears before uh, anything else to give them a chance to come up freely without uh, any hindrance. And then I went to where I have a little bit of raspberries growing. Um, not the larger plot of raspberries, I'll take care of that one later. But just a small one in this particular plot and I cleared around that. And then I cleared around the little patch of rhubarb that I have. I should have a nice patch of rhubarb this year so we can make rhubarb and strawberry jam. Yum, yum. Uh, I like the flavor of the two of them combined. It's, it's very nice. By the way, I'm going to do something with these potatoes. Um, so after replanting my garlic, I cleared... Uh, spots along the fence line and over my arch. I have the garlic on one side of the arch and <laughs> I tried to grow beans on that last year and apparently beans and and uh, garlic don't go well together. They're terrible companion plants. So I have I did replant the garlic on the one side of the arch, but uh, I've made sure that I did not plant it on both sides this time, so I had a spot there for the beans. So I have two spots for beans, and they are climbing. They are not the um, bush beans, so they should do fine on the one side of the arch, hopefully. Hopefully the garlic is far enough away not to, not to disrupt their growth. If it is, well, I've learned my lesson. Two years in a row, that would be a shame not to have any beans. I took 10, 12 cuttings from my lavender patch. Because normally I just take very young and I have no trouble rooting those. But this time around, I took woody cuttings, very strong ones, and probably about six inches long. Don't know if they'll root at all, but we'll try. And if they don't, the patch I have is doing wonderfully. I just wanted to make a path on the other side. The sage has not taken quite the same, but I do have a couple of sage plants coming back. Some of them died, which surprised me. Usually the sage is one of the strongest plants in my garden, but um, I, I don't know why that one didn't succeed, but it didn't, you know. I have two lovely plants that are coming up, so that'll be fine. All of that is exhausting. I worked on it as long as I could and then came home. And I decided that, well, I have these potatoes and Mark has been avoiding potatoes because he wants to 
cut the carbs. And so rather than let them go to waste, I thought, okay, I have this freeze dryer and I have these potatoes, so I am going to do my first batch of potatoes freeze dried. Now, last year I did, oh, maybe 150, 200 pounds, I can't recall, through the uh, dehydrator. And yes, they're rock hard and they take quite a while to rehydrate. They'd probably be great in a soup. But these, I'm thinking, should rehydrate really quickly. And I'm going to do these the same way, little chips. I could probably do uh, flakes but, or french fries, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to do little um, cubes. And I'm going to freeze dry those. Now, I'm going to cook them completely as well because I'm finding that uh, freeze dried foods, um, really nice to have them completely cooked and you just add the water and uh, it's edible right then and there and I kind of like that idea not having to cook them at all so I've got this batch peeled now and I'm going to go over uh, to the other table I have here and cut them into chips now I also have a pot of water on the stove and it's already boiling and I'm going to add some salt and I'll probably be cooking these in batches okay so there's some salt and I'm gonna move over now okay I've got my potatoes and I've got my little star fruit chopper and yes I damaged it but it should still work mostly for these potatoes anyway so let's see I'm cutting them maybe a quarter of an inch thick, maybe a little thicker than that. And what I want is just to have, yeah, maybe they should have been a bit smaller. But that's fine. So this will, these should cook up pretty fast. And that's the result. So we could make, oh, let's see. Uh, home fries and we could probably turn these into mashed potatoes as well so that's pretty much um, good I might even be able to make um, potato salad from these usually I have them a little bit larger for potato salad but that doesn't mean that we won't be able to use them that way okay So as I said, I will be uh, cutting and cooking these in batches. Um, yeah, when I dehydrated them, I would just simply uh, blanch them in order to stop them from going black. But since we're going to cook them the whole way, I don't have to worry about them going black. And yes, you would have to do one or the other, either cook or blanch. Okay, I'll get back to you when I finish chopping these all up. Okay, my first batch of potatoes is cooked and I've put them in cold water and then in my salad spinner not so much to spin them dry but just to give them a place to drain so that uh, I'm not putting a lot of water on the trays. Now I'm cutting some parchment paper to fit on the trays and then these potatoes will go on them. Okay I've cut my parchment paper. now. I don't know how much I can get on each tray and I'm certainly not going to overload it because I don't think I have a ton of potatoes anyway. So just spread them out 
and obviously they'll be quicker to process if there's if they're not overloaded. And I'm going to wait until all the batches are done before I determine how much to keep on each tray because um, we may want to put more on these trays. Okay, that's the first batch done and I've got another three trays to go and two batches. So yeah, we'll probably put a little bit more on these. Okay, I've got all my uh, potatoes cooked, put on the trays. I am not going to freeze them. I'm going to put them in the uh, freeze dryer. They have been cooled down though. All of them have been cooled down after they were cooked. So I'm thinking that perhaps in future I may flavor them. I may put some uh, something other than just a little bit of salt. Perhaps some paprika. I don't know. But this time it's just going to be plain. It's just got a little bit of salt. Anyway, what I'm going to do is when these are done tomorrow, I'd like to pull out my dehydrated chips and compare the two and perhaps try to rehydrate them. I suspect that these are going to rehydrate a whole lot quicker than my dehydrated ones, but we'll go through that process and see what it turns out like. Anyway, another freeze dryer experiment and we'll get back to you tomorrow. Bye for now.